The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Preaxer Zemium Fungicide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. For Real Agriculture, I'm Kelvin Hepner, and we are in the pigweed party zone here at uh, Crop Diagnostic School, Carmen, Manitoba. I'm pleased to be joined by Manitoba Agriculture Weed Specialist, Kim Brown-Livingston. Kim, of course, in the past in Manitoba and Western Canada, we've paid attention to red root pigweed. That's been on our, our radar. Now there are other types of pigweed that we certainly need to be paying attention to as well. Yeah, thanks very much, Kelvin. Um, we've got, yeah, red root pigweed has been around forever. It's always there. Um, we've It's been one of our, you know, main farm weeds. You know, in the past, though, it's been very fairly easy to control. Uh, we've had some group two resistance in this weed for, uh, you know, a long time. It's definitely growing, uh, but it's something that we haven't really worried too much about because we've always been able to control it. There are other pigweed species and and now we're really having to make sure we know which pigweed species we're dealing with because we have a couple of really bad ones come moving into the province they're a real problem elsewhere in the world and they haven't really got here yet um, which is a really really good thing um, but they are on the move they are coming to a field near you and uh, so it's really important to be able to identify which pigweeds you have and just keep an eye on them if we all of a sudden start we see our herbicides start to fail for some of those pigweed species um, again I haven't really seen anything fail other than some group two failures in red root pigweed uh, but the other pigweeds are really are really concerning because a lot of them are glyphosate resistant either here when they come in and we do find them or definitely elsewhere in the world we have glyphosate resistant pigweeds and, and lots of them so uh, yeah so we just have a couple different types here in general the really bad ones that we're talking about are they're tier one noxious weeds in Manitoba so they can't be allowed to survive here um, they're very detrimental to crop growth they can affect all of our agro Manitoba acres and um, um, that would be our water hemp and our and our palmer amaranth. We've talked about those before. We really don't see those here. When we find them, we destroy them as soon as we can. But we do have other pigweeds as well, and we know there's intercrossing. Um, and so right here where we have a ton of pigweeds, uh, that's just a lot of these on farm at the U of M farm here. There's a lot of pigweeds, but we have some good old red root pigweed here. But we also have uh, what's been positively DNA identified as um, Powell's pigweed or other people call it green pigweed. And so we're just trying to you know show people the difference between the pigweeds and how to tell them apart and especially if we do start to see some failures in our in our herbicide program uh, we need to know what we're up against okay. water hemp you mentioned uh, it's only been here in the province a few years I guess but there are already some horror stories that have accumulated over that short time frame yeah there's been a few crops that have had to be destroyed because of the water hemp because it is a tier one weed it is it has to be eradicated there are no exceptions and it has to be eradicated we do try to hand pull and we'll bag it and burn it we don't want that seed returned to, to, to hit the ground uh, we don't we don't want to um, increase it in the seed bank uh, but there have been a couple of instances where there was just so much it was impossible to hand pick so those crops were mowed down before seed set and uh, that that's just the way it was. Uh, we can't, it, it's a tier one weed, um, that's what happens. And so we've had that happen a couple of times. Other instances we've found isolated plants or we found enough that we were able to pick out, um, you know, we help out where we can, but basically it's the farmer's responsibility to do that. Um, but this is not a weed that you want on your farm, on any field, anywhere. You don't want your neighbors to have it. So you need to do everything you can. If you see any of it, it's got to go. It, it can't be allowed to set seed. They're really prolific seed producers and most of the water hemp and the Palmer amaranth that has come into Manitoba um, all of the water hemp is already coming preloaded with resistance because it's coming from other areas where it's already resistant so it's not becoming resistant here it's resistant the minute it hits our doorstep so if it's in your field you can pretty much assume it's glyphosate resistant it might be a group 2 resistant it might be a group 5 and it might be a group 14 resistant as well and that is really scary when we're starting off with those weeds yeah. uh, we're not they're not developing resistance here they're coming already resistant so we have no time on those ones yeah. I know we're approaching pigweed scouting season or the season where, where it becomes obvious in, in soybean fields in particular as the soybean crop dries down. What do you recommend though, Kim, in terms of scouting and, and how to go about looking for it, not waiting until the soybean crop dries down? We do see it start to show up a little bit now, although really by the time we hit that third week in July, you know, maybe our soybeans are for sure at their maximum height by then or they won't grow very much more. And that's when we do start to see the pigweed poke up above. And even the, the nice big tall soybeans, we do see that. The shorter soybeans, we maybe see it a little bit earlier than that. Um, basically, my August, I call it pigweed patrol, and that's me looking for it everywhere. It's all over the province now. It's in western Manitoba. It's in all through south central Manitoba. You know, we're finding it up in the 
interlake, the eastern interlake region. And so we start seeing it poke up. I mean, we can see some of these pigweeds back here are getting quite tall and they are definitely above our soybean crop. And so we start watching for it. And you really just, you have to do those, you have to be scouting. We need to be scouting anyways, um, especially in, in, in the face of all the resistant, the herbicide resistance that we have. We need to be doing more and more uh, post spray scouting to see, you know, what did we have some type of failure and why. It's not necessarily herbicide resistance, but that has to be definitely something that we're watching for. There's a number of reasons why herbicides fail, but basically we don't want any of these weeds um, to, to return seed back into the seed bank, back onto that same field. So anything you can do to stop that, and most of the time it's roguing it, it's pulling it out. If there's patches of it, we recommend mowing them. Uh, but you do need to start looking and looking now. It does get easier later on as the season goes on, uh, but then you know you need to be really careful to get that before you're dropping any seed on the ground. You need to get those plants out of there. Yeah. Just to clarify one thing you said there, Kim, when you're talking about it showing up across the province, that's water hemp or is that other uh, pigweed species? Water hemp has shown up across the province and we do have a map on our website. So we have some on the very uh, western border of Manitoba, right up against the Saskatchewan border. And then we have some, um, you know, as far west now in all of south central Manitoba and it's moved as far west as the Treehorn area. We've found isolated plant, plants here and there. And then it's moved all up, you know, into the interlake area, the eastern interlake area as well. So if you look at our water hemp map, um, it is getting redder and redder over time. That's not to say that that water hemp is still in those same fields that we found it in at one point, but because we did find it there, we know there's probably more seed bank and there's more chance for it to come. So those maps are a warning that it's been found in that RM and to be very, very careful um, because it could show up anywhere. All right. I guess we can always learn from our neighbours to the south and we have been following this issue certainly for, for years already in terms of adoption of different practices there uh, as it's as it's moved closer uh, we're hearing about zappers and different types of technology being used to address this issue in in North Dakota just as just across the border for example mm -hmm. yeah you know where there's a lot of really new great technologies coming uh, you know we're talking about using AI technology and the sea and spray technologies there's the zappers there's a lot of non uh, I guess the AI technology is still using herbicides but we're not using blanket operations across the whole field and then if we are targeting say open spots where we do have some weeds growing you can use um, the money you're saving by not blanket spraying the whole field. You can maybe throw in some tank mix partners or use a more expensive concoction and really get those weeds in there. So we have a lot better technologies. Uh, you know, we're able to use drones for scouting. We're able, we've got lots of, of really great mapping programs now too. So we're really able to kind of dial in on where some of these weed escapes are and what we can do about them. We do know that just blanket spraying the same herbicides again and again is not working. And we have, you know, in the face of glyphosate resistance, we have so much of it and it's kind coming at us really hard so we've got to save our glyphosate for as long as we can and so we're doing everything we can and there's a lot more tools out there it's a lot more management I mean the easy days are gone um, it's a lot more management it's a lot more record keeping it's working with your agronomist or your retail um, to really keep on top of this uh, you know but we can do it we've got very good farmers here in Manitoba they've done a great job so far and we don't have a problem like our neighbors to the south and our neighbors to the east do um, just because you know we, we have more diverse crops we use strategic tillage we, we do some of the things um, that that other places in the world aren't haven't done or, or, or weren't doing and maybe they're starting now so we do have a lot of advantages we do have a lot of resistant weeds but we don't have maybe as many as other people do so we're quite um, lucky in that regard and we just need to keep ahead of it but we can learn lessons you know the technology is being developed elsewhere in the world where these weeds are out of control and where they don't have any other options left we still have options here but we need to use them really really carefully so that our herbicides last as long as they can and then we bring in the other non-herbicidal uh, uh, controls and all using all of our cultural controls as well with uh, anything that makes our crop more competitive makes it a better you know, weed comp uh, competitor against weeds as well so you know we've got uh, and that's all agronomy and that is plant population and that is row spacing and that is fertility and that is you know manipulating varieties whether it's a tall versus a short variety all kinds of things so we've got all these tools so we need to use all of those and then still use the herbicides as wisely as possible to make them last all right I think that's a great summary there, Kim. One final question, uh, kind of changing topics a bit. Palmer amaranth was found not too far away from here a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Have there been any other uh, findings of it so far, or what's the latest on, on that specific species? Uh, no, we've just found it uh, basically twice in Manitoba, uh, once last year and then once the year before. It was found on the same farm, and uh, that farm has a history of growing millet, and so we do feel that that may have come in as a contaminant in the millet seed, so I think that's something when, if people do have some more diverse crops on the farm, and that seed is coming from summers in the States, or maybe summers out west, or summers out east, basically not a local seed source, just to be really careful for it to watch for 
volunteers coming in and there's only ever been three plants found in total they've been destroyed immediately they weren't they weren't setting seed when they were found and uh, but that grower is being very uh, vigilant and the agronomist working with some very good agronomists uh, as well that person is, is doing that and so they're watching at all the fields and they're watching for that and they'll continue watching for that for a long time just to see if any of those weeds are popping up all right and as producers head into the field, as agronomists head into the field for that pigweed patrol season, what do you recommend they do if they have plants that are in question? Um, pull them out and and uh, pull them out, bag them, uh, find out what they are. I always say bag it and burn it. Try and find out what it is. We need we have uh, DNA testing available here in Manitoba through the Pest Surveillance Initiative Lab that's in Winnipeg, and we actually can test um, the leaves and find the DNA to know what species it is. Um, so we do that's helpful, and then we also can send uh, the samples away and, and try to determine the herbicide resistance as well. If we think if we think that there's been herbicide failure on those plants uh, but those plants do not they can't stay in the field because all they're going to do is set seed drop seed and then it's way bigger of a problem for the future so I say bag it and then later on it needs to be burnt one thing too when you pull these plants out of the field uh, don't when you bang the, the root against the toe of your boot to get the dirt off, don't do that because you can drop some seed while you're doing that. So just bag it the way it is, pull it out. If they're big plants, you need a shovel because trust me, these things get monstrous. Um, you need a shovel, get big garbage bags. We recommend too, guys carry garbage bags on the combine when we get into combine season and you see something funny that shouldn't be there, do not put that through the combine. Stop the combine, get off and bag it and you know deal with it later, but don't run that through the combine or you'll end up seeding that through all of your fields and then your combine will move that from field to field so an important message thank you for taking the time to join us today Kim thanks thank you